It's big Wednesday, the Wednesday before Rosh Hashanah. Wow, what is God doing? Well, God is getting ready to open the books on you, <laughs> on us. And uh, I can tell you right now, you're probably going through things. And I'm Pastor Steve Muncy, and I'll tell you, uh, you know, the, 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 the hurricane that happened and uh, just about destroyed Puerto Rico. Another earthquake happened this morning, uh, 8.7. Uh, the things that are brewing in people who are going through things, it's only a sign that the first month or the outpouring starts Sunday. And when the sun goes down, we begin a new season. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about it. Let me tell you something. Tonight, you need to get on the phone, tell people, or even get here. And that is, I am going to read you a scripture verse where God said in the seventh month on the 21st day, that's today. It's in the Bible. The exact month on our Gregorian calendar, and then knowing that it's just a few days before uh, Rosh Hashanah. We, we must, I, I can only tell you, this is a, a must time we focus in on God. This is when God says, repent for 10 days on atonement, he opens the books, and then if Jesus comes back, he comes back during Sukkot, he comes back in those eight days. and. I don't know if he's going to come back, but I am preparing. You should prepare. But then, to learn about the great outpouring of what he's going to do, tonight's word is in the Bible. It, it's dated in the Bible of this day. This is going to be one of the most uh, wonderful prophetic words that one could have. Uh, and I want to excite all of you because you that are tuning in, I know you're excited because you wanted to tune in. And I can tell you, there is great things that are happening. Uh, I'll talk to you this evening about Sunday. Please come, please drive, please fly here. Get here for the groundbreaking for the Equestrian Center at 3.30, 3.30, September 25th. It's gonna be unbelievable. You, it's gonna be, we are gathering thousands of people and we are going to pour oil, you are gonna help me pour oil on the ground. We're coming up out with one of the most powerful ministries that's going to affect special needs, behavior. This equestrian, nearly 80,000 square feet coming up out of the ground is gonna change our community. It's gonna be a strong outreach for all of us. It's going to be phenomenal. So tonight as we go in, we're gonna, we're gonna experience God's word and you're gonna experience. I, I'm really, really excited because to find the date of today in the Bible uh, a couple of hours before Rosh Hashanah, it's prophetic. Tonight we're going to experience what God said on this day, what he's going to do. So get ready. This is going to be a great outpouring on this big Wednesday night. So let's go into the service and let's get excited about what God is about to do in a new season for you. Never lost the battle, no. 
No, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know you never win. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's never lost a battle. Come on, lift your voice. Say everything, everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now. Breaking my heart of stone, taking over like it's Jericho. And my walls are all crashing down right now. I know you reign. Oh 
God, 
his promises. Praise God. He is faithful. So tonight, let us read together from 3 John, verse 2. Read it together. Those online, read it out loud. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Dear Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. We thank you that you are God and that nothing is impossible with you and for you. And Lord Jesus, we just bring the needs of our heart and our lives before you, knowing that we can receive from your abundant grace. And Lord Jesus, I pray for every single person under the sound of our voices, Lord, that you would provide in ways that they can never even think or imagine because you are a God of more than enough. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray for open doors. I pray for favor. I pray for opportunities. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would order their steps, Lord. Place them in the place they need to be at the time they need to be, Father God, and that they would be able to receive the fullness of what you have for them. Father, we thank you that wisdom comes from you, and we thank you that all good things come from your hand. So, Lord Jesus, I pray for those good things to be poured upon, to showered upon, every single one father god that there would be no lack or no want because we are your sons and we are your daughters and we thank you for the miracle in jesus name amen and we're going to be healthy because jesus is in this place we got a special guest his name is jesus he's here he's gonna he's going to have his angels put pancreas in people that need it. He's going to heal spines and backs. Muscles, ligaments, and tendons are going to line up with the plan of God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to summon the angels of God straight from heaven to heal every sick body in this place. In that name that's above every name, Jesus' name. And Lord, we've got the best pastor on the planet He's been with you. He has a word for us tonight. We're going to be so pumped when we leave here. Because he's going to bring that word. And that word heals us. That word restores us. That word blesses us. We claim every blessing that God has to offer for every person in this house. Can I get at least one amen? Amen. 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 The third part of that prayer is that your soul may prosper. Gracious Father, I just come right now, O oh Lord. Lord, and as we believe, O oh Lord, we place our hands upon our minds, O oh Lord. Lord, and we know the soul represents, O oh Lord, the mind, will, and emotions, O oh Father God. Lord, so we come right now, oh, Father God, that you just heal minds right now, oh, Lord. Lord, oh, Father, we cast away fear, oh, Lord, and depression, oh, Lord. Every evil thought, anything that tries to exalt itself above your word, oh, Father God. Lord, we speak, oh, Lord, your word to our minds, oh, Lord. Let wisdom, oh, Lord, come upon us, oh, Father, that we move forth, oh, Lord. Lord, in your ways, oh, Father God. Lord, your word says, oh, Father, those that execute your word are strong, oh, Lord. So let them be strong in mind, oh, Father, today, oh, Lord. Lord, let their emotions be healed, oh, Father, as the Holy Holy Spirit comes in, O oh Lord. Let it enter into the hearts, O oh Lord, and heal the emotions, O oh Lord. Lord, every hurt, O oh Father, God, every damage, O oh Lord, that the enemy tried to do, O oh Lord. We come, O oh Lord, that you restore right now, O oh Lord. That the Holy Spirit is going in and comforting, O oh Father, God, the broken spirit, O oh Father. Lord, and I just thank you right now, O oh Father, Lord, that you are touching, O oh Father, our will, O oh Lord. Lord, that our will is aligned in your will, O oh Lord. That our ways will be your ways, O oh Lord. Lord, O oh Father, 
Father, we ask that you order our steps, O oh Lord, and guide us, O oh Lord, upon the ways that you wish to choose us to go, O oh Father. Lord, we thank you right now, O oh Father, that you strengthen us, O oh Lord, in you, and we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We believe it, Lord. We believe it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I believe it. And you may be seated. I just want to draw some attention to you. Upcoming this week, this weekend, Sunday, September 25th, we are having a health fair event. There's going to be a health fair event. Yes, that's something to clap about, your health. We are having a health fair event in our gymnasium starting at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There are many companies here. There's Athletico, the uh, physical therapy services. There's Walgreens. Walgreens will be here. They will be giving out flu shots, boosters. They will be giving health screenings. And American Red Cross will be here. Anyone who wants to donate blood from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the gym, be here and be and get your health checked out because it says that we will be in good health. God bless you and watch this. Welcome to Family Christian Center. We're happy to have you here. Side, please fill it out. And for our online viewers, please click the connect tab on our website. FCCforme.com. Now, let's check out what's happening here at FCC. Well, it's that time of year. Scrooge is ready to go in December. One of our greatest productions that we do here at Family Christian Center. I need you. Maybe you've never put a costume on and never been on stage. I want you to be that person to experience. So all you do is sign up. We're going to close this year out with another incredible production called Scrooge. So let's get ready. Come, try out, come and be a part, and let's take the gospel to people who have never heard it in this way before and will change their life. It's time for you to get involved. I am excited about the 25th of September, the day of Rosh Hashanah. 3.30 in the afternoon, I'm inviting everyone to come to the groundbreaking. I'm already staking out where the building is going to be of this incredible, phenomenal arena, outreach. And so, we're inviting the whole church to come and groundbreak. We're going to pour oil on the ground. We're going to dedicate the ground. And out of this ground is going to rise an incredible, incredible equestrian center that you're going to be so proud of. So invite your friends. Also, everyone, you can come to the church, sign up so you can ride the bus over here because we can leave your car in the parking lot and we will bus you over 20 buses. Sign up today for the great groundbreaking at 3.30 on the 25th of September. I am so excited. We are so excited for our health fair and blood drive on Sunday, September 25th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the gym. Local and corporate companies will be with us making sure that we are healthy and strong this season. Walgreens will be giving flu vaccinations, Fitness Point, Cryo Freeze, Home Health Care, Chiropractic Care will be with us and so many more companies. We will also be raffling off free gym memberships and the Red Cross is doing a blood drive. So make sure to sign up today on our FCC app to reserve your spot so that you can give blood to those in need. We want to be healthy and strong this season. So we will see you Sunday, September 25th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Oh, it's exciting. How many's glad to be here on Wednesday night? You help us play a little bit. Let me show you something. Uh, Pastor Poet, now we want to complete with your prayer. Uh, there is how many? 932 schools. Amen. 
Amen. So I want to sign a couple of these. I've already signed these 900, and I just got one or two, but I wanted to sign it in front of you. And so schools like, um, we have written it on our stationery, DePaul University. Now these are schools that you laid hands upon. Here is um, Aspire Charter Academy, Gary, Indiana. Here is... Um, here is uh, another one. Uh, there's a, a college. There's a Al Olivet Nazarene College. Somebody prayed for Olivet Nazarene College. <laughs> Governor State University. Uh, and it's just not universities, but it's our own schools, 900. Um, Caterpillar Care. That's, that's, that's quite unique. Chicago, Illinois. That's probably a daycare. Uh, Fernwood, uh, Fernwood uh, uh, Elementary in Chicago, and, and I signed every one of these, and I'm signing, uh, I want to sign the last uh, one uh, in front of you, because we have prayed, and these letters will go out, and uh, here's what they say. Uh, they say, Family Christian Center, they, they say um, to the president of this school, whoever it might be, and we say Family Christian Center, and we tell us where we're located, uh, is a church that's actively encouraging both corporate and individual prayer. For the last few years, we have solicited the name and location of schools that our members and children attend. And just before school begins, or shortly thereafter, the elders and individuals of our church Go to the schools and pray that no violence, no hurt uh, is attaches to the students or the teachers at the school. Your school is now one of those whom we prayed and we prayed for this year. In the past, there has been no gunfire reported nor any student or teacher injured or hurt at the schools in which we prayed for. And we, God receives the praise and honor. We want to let you know your school has been prayed for this year. And, uh, and then I sign it, and I'm sending it in, in your name. Everybody stretch forth your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, all 900. And what is that total? That total number is what? 932. 932. Nine and 32. Everybody say 900. 900. And 32. And 32. Schools. Schools. Lord, we just know, God, that every hand that was laid on these schools, there will be no violence. There will be no gunfire. There will be angels in these schools. No riots. God, there will be, there will be no harm or killings. And in the name of Jesus, we take authority of it, and we declare, Satan, these schools are marked by Jesus. Amen. And we believe it's going to be done, and everybody shout amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Let's give the Lord a great big hand. Let me see if I can fix what I have wrecked here. And uh, thank you, Sound Department, for... Uh, helping me and uh, sorry that everything fell apart and uh, that's what's supposed to be happening because the devil knows that Sunday begins a new season and uh, and if, if you if, if you haven't been going through anything in the last couple days that just means that you're not going to get blessed but if you've been going through something, that's a signal God is up to something big in your life. So all of you that are watching me, excuse me as I fix this. I do want to say uh, also before I give you the word tonight, every week there are people who come at 630 to the church and they sit by the phone lines. We have a bank of phones in the dome and... And, and then our television ministry, 
which is from 6.30 to 7.30 on the U. It's not on a Christian channel, but it's on the U. I think it's channel 26 in Chicago. And we are right after Joel Osteen. And, and uh, let me just, let me encourage everybody because we've been on, uh, I don't know if we've been, I think we've been on a year, uh, but uh, just like uh, 8 7 43 calls came in during that hour. Now, these are people that see the number on the screen. They pick up the phone and they dial. And we have a bank of phones and under uh, Alina Dowd, uh, one of the elders, these wonderful people from our church pick up the phone, come early to church, 630. And for one hour, when somebody's watching our television program, they'll dial that number. Usually, I will come on and say, if you need prayer, or if you need God in your life. So these are the numbers that are coming in within the hour. Now you must understand we're limited because we only have about 10 phones. If we had more phones and could acquire more calls, we probably would get, we would get more. And there are calls that come on an answering service and we call them back. But let me just encourage you, and by the way, when there is a call made, it represents so many people who are watching. Now, different Arbitron ratings for different networks and regions. But you must understand that Chicago is the third largest uh, uh, network or television audience. I think uh, Los Angeles is number one, or it could be New York or Los Angeles. It could be New York first, I'm not quite sure, but I know Chicago is the third market for television min, uh, media. Now, when you're on a television set, not a cable, when a lot of us have cable, and, and you can only get it through cable, and many homes have cable, but when you're on a station like the U, uh, it also has the capabilities that you don't have to have cable, but you can pick it up on your television set. And you can't pick up regular cable. For instance, if you uh, don't have cable, you can't pick up TBN or Word Network or Daystar or whatever Christian network you're familiar with. But this is a station in which, uh, you know, we used to have rabbit ears or just regular antenna people can get, which is important. There are a lot of people that don't have cable because it costs so much e each month. So when you get a call in the market of Chicago and you have a station like the U, it has the power to go all the way to almost the Wisconsin line and even dip into Racine area. It, and then that signal goes all the way down to Kankakee and a little further. It, it goes uh, west uh, beyond Elgin. It comes down to Northwest Indiana and it goes almost to Laporte, almost almost to South Bend. In that block of potential is 12 and a half million people in that block. That's what's the population within that block from, from uh, south of Milwaukee all the way to South Bend County, Northwest Indiana and Chicagoland area. Even though the population is just Chicago boundaries is over 4.2 million, all the surrounding areas where some of you live, you put all that population together and there is 12.5 million people in this Great Lake region from Wisconsin into Illinois, Indiana, and even, uh, you know, we, we start to go on to the uh, Michigan line. So when we talk about Arbitron ratings, television networks, NBC, CBS, this is how they know people are watching. And what they do is they call it Arbitron ratings. So a letter, when someone sends a letter, or, or even in support, and many of you have probably written uh, or supported uh, television or, or responded. Maybe you've responded to the pillow guy. Anybody seen the pillow guy? <laughs> and uh, you see him everywhere. By the way, he's a great Christian. And, um, uh, you know, you see advertisements and and so when people respond to that, that's how networks note how people are watching. Uh, like at Super Bowl, they guide the television watchers by the water pumping stations. This is going to be funny now, but television stations and corporate 
American in the media market will contact the sewage department of cities and communities because like when a Super Bowl is happening and they know they have a big audience, when the commercials happen, people go to the bathroom and they can tell the gauges of water that is going and coming and you'd be surprised how that that's how they make Arbitron ratings or this is how many people are watching this number one show. So when you see secular, you see people say, uh, so many people, uh, this is a number one show, they know how many millions, millions are watching this show. Also Netflix. Now, if you have Netflix, Hulu, or, or whatever they call all of that stuff, you know, uh, you're buying that and they can figure that. They can, they can figure how many are watching in all this new technology. So when I tell you the numbers of calls we're getting, each call represents, and I, I cannot tell you exactly what it represents on the U, but it represents several thousand people. We get a letter, it really represents, it represents so many thousands. It could, it could be, if you get a letter, they will say, well, that represents maybe 800 watching. Or you get a phone call, that would represent maybe a, a thousand watching. We, we don't know, but it's, it's up there. And we have the population of potentially of this 12 million market as we are on at 6.30 to 7.30. And everybody should feel good about that because we are, I'm not building, I'm not building a ministry. I don't ask for money. I don't ask them to write me and become a partner. I'm not doing any of that. I want to reach the people without saying that. And so for, I don't, we don't ask for any money. We don't ask for any money. We don't, we don't build partnerships. If I want to do that, I'd go on TV and Daystar and Word Network and build my own network and build people who love me. And those that don't love me local, there'll be other people love me, you know, you know, love the one you're with, you know, you know, and love the one you're not with. And, and, uh, and so I, I could do that. I could have done that many years ago. I could have had a television ministry, had my own thing and, and partnership. And I never did that. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with all of those people and all of you that support those. I, uh, I, there's nothing wrong with that. So I don't want you to think that I have a conviction against it. I'm just a pastor. I think that if somebody's watching me in L.A., ought to, they ought to be giving their ties to that pastor that's, that's going to bury them and pray for them because I'm not going to marry them, I'm not going to bury them, and I'm not going to pray for them hand on hand. Hello. You say, well, so-and-so is my evangelist. He's my man of God. We'll call him and ask him to come and marry you. And, and then when somebody is in trouble at the hospital, call him, see if he'll come. So I believe in the local pastor. I believe in the local church. I have, I, I, you know, I was one of the ones that, that built TBN and Daystar and and Word Network. I was on all day long for many years, almost every day, helping them build and establish worldwide Christian television. Uh, do I have the ability to make the phones ring? Uh, you could ask any network today. When we brought Pastor Muncie in, he could, he could raise two or three million dollars in two or three hours and we'd play it over and over and over again. That never came to me, that came to them. So I forfeited all of that. I probably could have had all this paid for and had much more because we could have help from other people in other states, etc. I didn't do that. So in this hour that we're on, I don't ask for money. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm, I'm, I'm telling the people about the word and, you know, of God. And so, so we do ask them if they want prayer or there is salvation. So I don't know when I give you this number how many it represents. It could represent 5,000 per call. It could represent 10,000 a call. Anyway, each call represents so many thousands of people. And what I'm about to tell you, you might not be impressed with, but uh, as I talk to other nationals, they are elated. They can't believe that in one local market, even though it's big, that we are getting this much response every single Sunday. So people from our church answer the phones, get up at five o'clock, they get here at 6.30 and they wait by the phone and the phones ring while we're on television and they are praying for people. So now when I give you these figures, you gotta think 
Wow, each caller represents so many thousands that are watching. So they tell me, I don't know, I, I don't know. You tells me, of course they want to tell me this, so we will keep buying time. It's not free. We have to pay for it. But, but they, they, they would tell me. So they tell me that you are actually being viewed. This is what they say, that you are actually being viewed between 150 to 175,000 every Sunday morning. Now, I don't know. I'm, I'm not here to try to prove any records. But when you tell them the figures of our phone calls, it's amazing. So we can only take so many. So like 8, 7, 22, we got 43 calls. August 21st, it was 54 calls. September 11th, we got 53 calls. Last Sunday, we got 56 calls. You will notice that it's in in that 50 marks because that's about as much as we can take with our phones. Let's give all of the people who answer the phones and pray a great big hand clap. And all, they're, they're probably in here today. And everybody say, God bless that one hour of ministry in Chicago, Indiana. So while you're getting up on Sunday mornings, the word of God is going out. And what it is, it's me preaching probably a service that I've already preached and they've edited it and they're putting it right out there. And so you should, you should rejoice and pray and say, praise God, Family Christian Center just keeps throwing the seed out, keeps throwing, throwing great word out there. And so that, that is a part of what God is doing. Now I want to tell you what's happening this very day. And I want to thank uh, the band and everybody needs to get ready because uh, today I'm going to read you from the Bible what the Bible says about today, the seventh month and the 21st day. I'm going to read you a scripture verse that God spoke on the seventh month in the 21st day. And that's today. What, what, what did God speak? And remember, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let me set you up for what is about to happen in probably the most holiest days of God. We are about to enter next week the birthday of the earth, which is the days of awes or the prayer and fasting or the 10 days of repentance, which will start Sunday on Rosh Hashanah, okay? So today God speaks a word and I'm going, to, I'm going to share it with you and it will excite all of you because it's fun and rewarding when God speaks. Anybody want to hear God speak? He speaks in many ways. I will tell everybody that probably you have been pushed. Things have happened. Things have broken out. Uh, uh, poor Puerto Rico in the... In the and another huge hurricane that just almost wiped out that island. No lights, no electricity. Uh, there have been two earthquakes in the earth that's been over the seven Richter scale. This has all happened in the last few days. There is turmoil you know about and you don't know about. Satan is very nervous. You must study the enemy. The Bible said, know your enemy. Be not ignorant of the devil's devices. Repeat that with me. Say, be not ignorant of the devil's devices. So Jesus teaches us what will happen in the last days. What will people do? How will they react? He talks about many people in the last days will be offended. People are offended over just because you didn't say hi to them and you looked at them and you weren't even thinking about them. And you had something on your mind that was so unbelievable that they imagined that you just looked at them and hate them and they got offended. Hello? We are in a high level in our culture of offenses. We are, people are offended. They're offended by their race. They're offended by their gender. They're offended by uh, the, the class that they live in when it comes monetarily. They're just offended. There are people in the church offended. You don't do this for me. You don't do that for me. You know what drives me crazy? It's people who are in the church that say these words. When the church gets right, we'll have revival. 
You know what I want to say? I want to point the finger at this and when you get right, we'll have revival. There's no such thing. Let me, let me teach you something. Let me teach you something. That's a pet peeve of mine. All my life, I've heard people say that. When the church gets right, then God's going to bless it. Then why did he say the tares and the wheat grow together? And why did he say, I'll separate them? And if you understand anything about wheat, wheat almost has to be supported by tares. And, and we're more worried about the weeds than we are the wheat that makes the bread. And remember this, folks, when you plant a seed, you plant it in a ground that God cursed. And the only way you're going to make it in life is you've got to make it in the environment of a cursed atmosphere. And the only way you can make it in a cursed atmosphere is to get blessed by God that you can outdo the curse that you live in. And if there's a curse of hypocritical upon you, then you will start strange fires among the body. And your heretic legalism will find you in an atmosphere of criticism. You just ought to be thankful. My God, I'm saved. I'm, I'm still living for God. And look, there's somebody else saved. And look, there's somebody else at church. I, I, it is not my job to separate the tares from the wheat. That's what Jesus is going to do. It's my job to preach the gospel, to encourage, to uplift. Oh, there's a time to rebuke. There's a time of all of that. But I just want to encourage you that if you're waiting on somebody to be good enough for God to be impressed for him to do something, we'll be waiting forever. But praise God, we know the seasons and we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. What is he doing? You must understand that Satan knows this Bible. He knows God. He knows God better than any person in here. He knows God. He lived with God billions and billions of years. He can tell you everything about God. He knows when God is going to move. You remember when Daniel prayed and the Bible says that God told him, I heard you the first day, but when I sent it. Well, how did, how, how did the enemy or the prince and powers know God was sending it? They knew by the prayers of Daniel and his faith, God was going to react to that. Satan knows your belief systems. He knows God will respond to your faith. He knows when you get to the place that you say enough is enough. He knows God is not a God that will lie, but he will respond to your faith. Now I'm going to say something tonight. Quit using your faith on your past. Quit praying about all the things you used to do wrong. You've been forgiven, covered with the blood of the lamb. You're a brand new creature. Quit putting your faith on the past and put it on the future. Clap your hands, somebody in this house. Yeah, the truth. I find myself Using my faith, oh God, I messed up. Oh God, I should have did this. Oh God, I should have done more. I should have. And I'm spending more time in prayer in my past when I should be spending more time in my present and believing for my future. So what does Satan know? He knows that atonement is coming. He knows Rosh Hashanah will be here Sunday. He's very aware of what God is up to. He already knows God is getting the books ready on the Day of Atonement, two weeks from tonight. When the fall of that beautiful uh, atonement two weeks from tonight, and every person that's a believer should, should be in, uh, in the house of God, I almost said should be in a synagogue, should be somewhere in the presence of God because that is just a, a, about the most holiest day to God. And when you understand it, you really get excited. 
And these next 10 days, God is going to make access for everybody to repent, to say, God, whatever I need to do, I'm going to put my life in order. And God, I'm believing for the very best. I want to ask anybody here, anybody ready for the best? Anybody ready for the greater? Anybody ready for the impossible? So you have noticed things have happened to your family. You have noticed just stuff. Why did that happen? What is going on? Who, why did this take place? Don't be ignorant. Satan is afraid. He is afraid of a couple things. One, he's afraid God's going to bless you. He's been working overtime on you to discourage you. He's been working overtime to get you in a position that you would abort what God has for you. So he's working on you. You need to know you are in war. You need to know that you are not living in a world that there's no devil. There are demons. There are devils. And they don't work in trees. They work in people. And they work in stuff. And, and don't get mad at the person that you think you should be mad at. You should be mad at the spirit that got inside of them to rebuke that. I'm going to read you the scripture verse. The Bible says every believer in Matthew, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers we have here? Encourage everybody in the building by just shouting an amen so they can hear you. Okay. Now this is what happens to believers. These signs shall follow the believer. These are the signs. They're behind you. They're following you everywhere you go. If you believe in God, you actually have angels and signs that follow you everywhere you go. What are those signs? The Bible said these signs shall follow the believer. They shall lay hands on the sick. Everybody lift your hand up in the air and say, my hand as a believer is a healing hand. I can lay my hands on a sick person and if they'll get an agreement, I'll say in the name of Jesus, be healed. Healing hands. God has made your hands to be healing hands. Which of you mothers, and us fathers too, we're not gonna be left out in this one, but you mothers, you know that when you take your hand and touch your daughter or your son and you just rub their neck, you know, mamas know how to, baby, I love you. And you know, at first, if, when they get older, you know, they kind of say, ah, they'll do that, but really they're saying, do more of it. <laughs> That's the language of, do more of it, please. Nothing like a hand touching another hand saying, it's going to be all right. Now, as a believer, God puts within you doctor power, nurse power, supernatural power. You have the right as a believer to lay hands on the sick. Now, let me give you protocol on that. Don't just be laying your hands on everybody because some people don't want your hands to be laid on them. That's the reason why the Bible says if, if you are sick, call for the elders or ask to be prayed for. It's best you ask the individual, would you like me to pray for you? If they say yes, that's already a moment in their faith to believe, whether they are Christian or not. Thank you. I'm going to pray for you. You put your hand, good place to put your hand is on their hand. Don't be feeling all over, you know, don't. Put your hand on the shoulder. Amen? Amen. And you say, because this is the power that you have as a believer. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now, you don't have to prove anything. 
You don't have to feel anything. You don't have to shake. You don't have to push them. You don't have to shake them. Lay your hands on them. Now, whatever they do, praise God. You might lay hands on somebody and they go, whoa, hallelujah. And you go, oh, wow, wow, wow. But that's not your responsibility. If they want to react that way, if they want to fall out, if they want to speak in tongues, what? But you're doing your duty on laying hands on the sick. And, and you don't have to be a big prophet or an apostle. You don't have to have a fancy prayer. Quit preaching while you're praying. I just can't stand that. People who pray for you and then they start preaching. I want God to heal you and love you. Oh, yeah, Lord. I know you're coming now. Oh, God Almighty. And we think, Speed and spit is anointing. In the name of Jesus. That name is powerful. In the name of Jesus be healed. Now if you feel utterance, if you feel loudness, if you feel that, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, making fun of that. But I'm going to tell you the formula and it works every time. Soft or loud. In the name of Jesus be healed. That's what the Bible says. So when you're walking through life, you say, hey, I need a sign. Sign jumps up. What is it? I need that power to lay hands on the sick. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Then the Bible says, these are the signs that follow you. Cast out devils in my name. What does that mean? You have the authority to say, you have the authority to, to take authority over prince and powers. And when you say the name of Jesus, folks, you got to know the devil is afraid of that name. If you're in your room or house and you're afraid, you need to say in the name of Jesus, that spirit, I don't know how you got in this house. And because the lights are out and the furnace kicked on, and my mind went into gear thinking somebody's in the house and I become scared, you should stop and say in the name of Jesus, that spirit, I don't know where you came from, but you leave right now. You have the power to cast that out. Oh, come on, believers. Somebody calls you up and says, it's going around. What's going around? The snips are going around, the, the ears, the, the eyes, the, the puke, the, the, the stomach flu. Of course, th that doesn't happen no more. It's, it's COVID. It's a new name now. It's, if you break your arm, it's COVID-19 or 20 or 21. I, I don't know. All of a sudden, we think we're going to get it. That, that's wrong. That's wrong. Now, I, I understand caution. I understand. I see people have masks on here. There's nothing wrong with that. No, you, that there's nothing wrong. I understand caution. But you should not have fear. You need to, if you, if you have to quote all day long when you get up out of your bed, no weapon formed against me, no sickness, no poverty, no demons, no enemies. It cannot be formed against me. I am a believer. I am a believer. Where's the army of believers? I am a believer in the name of Jesus. I cast that out. Let's, let's rehearse. Everybody, everybody do this. Say, say with authority. Don't, don't be timid. Say, in the name of Jesus. I take authority of my house. Any spirit of any kind. Be gone. Go now. In the name of Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. Say, cast out devils. Demons. This is the privilege we have. Haggai is in the Old Testament, and, and the minor prophets, or, and I call them minor prophets, most people do, because it is the last part of the Old Testament. Obadiah, Zephaniah. Malachi, Haggai, there's a few more. God spoke to them at the end of the Old Testament and he is dueling, if I can use that terminology, he is dueling 
our or the future of the church or the new covenant, new covenant is Jesus who's dying and, and his blood is shed. And that Jesus is going to bring the outpouring and, and, and that latter, the latter outpouring is dealing when Haggai is prophesying and he's speaking the words of God. He doesn't know it, but God is using it for the present and is using it for the future. So when you, when you read Haggai, this is where Haggai is. It is year, I believe, 536 B.C. Prior to that, 70 years prior to that, maybe a little less, there's been captivity of the Jews. They have come in in 601 to 586 in that, in that time period. Solomon's temple is standing, and Jerusalem used to be strong but has neglected God. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, the great Babylonian empire, now comes to Jerusalem. They burn down the temple, the very sacred place that God promised Solomon when he built the temple. These Babylonians, they burn down God's house. They ransack Jerusalem. They tear down the walls of Jerusalem, the holiest city in the world. And they kill many, but they take, they take nearly, they take nearly 36 to 37, as high as 40,000 in captivity. You would know a couple names of those people. Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. They were in the captivity of the Babylonian empire ransacking and burning Jerusalem. They took them 400 miles. They left no Jew behind. What Jew that was behind was dead on the ground in Jerusalem. This was, this was a killing. This was a slaughterhouse. This was an unbelievable moment. We read, we read very clearly why God did this, and it was a generational, generational um, exercise by God because the people at one time loved God. You remember Solomon, he, God had blessed him with so much riches. God had blessed him in building the temple. The glory was so great, there was no war. But look what Solomon ended up doing. He married a thousand wives. He got off course. Be careful. You, you don't let silver and gold and the blessings get you off course. It will happen. The temptation will happen. And, and, and there's always this theory that power uh, and, and money can get you off course. And Solomon's stables, his horses, his horses, you read it in the Bible, he had golden stables. His, his stables, they came from all over the world just to look at his horse stable. Well, I, I promise you, we don't have that much money to put gold on our stable, but what we're about to do Sunday is going to blow a lot of people's minds and raising up a great ministry. Everybody got to be there. Parachutes, we got parachutes going to jump out of airplanes right in front of us. Food trucks everywhere. Everybody's going to get oil. I, I left that oil. And we have, oh, I'm so excited about this. Pastor Poet, so thrilled. He and Pastor Jim put this together. We went out and bought containers, and we got, uh, we got over 1,000, 1,400 of these, and they are filled with oil. We'll be passing these out to you, and at a certain time, we're going to pour it on the ground, and we're going to anoint that acreage for the great things that God's going to do. We're going to have a backhoe and we're going to dig a hole and we're going to plant a Bible. We're going to celebrate with horses and prayers and governors and people of, uh, of, of leadership. It, it, and it's going to be a great, great, incredible time. And don't you know the devil doesn't like it when you take ground that is cursed and now begin to say it's blessed. 
blessed, blessed. So we are now somewhere 530, 530, 537 B.C. It has now come time that judgment has stopped and Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the midst of, of Babylonian empire influence. And everybody needs to know this. We only read of four people, but those four people changed. And I'm talking about people who were in prison, people who were kidnapped, people who were hoarded in by huge slave groups, Jews, and taken back to Babylon and used as slaves. Out emerged Daniel. Why did Daniel emerge out of slavery? Because he knew the answer was God and not being mad at Babylon and what they had done. He knew fully well they had destroyed the temple. In fact, this is when the mystery of the Ark of the Covenant, which next Wednesday night, and of course, the Night of Atonement, we will, we will unveil it. And, and by the way, Word Network says, please let us turn us on. We want, we, want, we want the live service. So the dancers and the singers and all of the new choir members that are joining and are coming Thursday night, they're, 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 this, it's, it's going to be a celebration. We, we're going over minute by minute what is happening. And, and we're going to unveil the Ark of the Covenant as symbolic of it was once a year that the priests went in and, and, and it's, it's going to be so exciting and, 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 when I, and when I think about when I think about what is about to happen to all of you you must understand that this season that we're about to go in is going to be spectacular so God is, is and I believe this with all my heart he's desperate to raise you up we might be in the minority, but before it's over with, he's going to show up in your file, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Daniel is going to become the prime minister, and he was taken as a prisoner and turned into a slave, but would not allow offenses and evil get in his life until he was brought from the lowest part of those Jews that were taken captives as prisoners. He rose up until he interpreted for the king when nobody else could interpret. All of you better get ready. You don't know it, but you're about to, you are about to step in to a situation that God is going to use you. And you don't even know it, a family reunion on a job. You're just going to say something and it's going to change everything in that atmosphere. You say, well, I, I don't know very much. You're going you're to be in a restaurant and somebody is going to, some, somebody is going to overhear walk over to your table and say, what did you say? And you smile at them and you just say with your faith, well, I just know that this is about to happen. And then they look at you and say, you have no idea, but we're doing exactly what you're saying. So we, we need to talk, what, what, who are you? And you just say, I'm a blesser. If you ask me to pray for it, well, we're believing for this transition and it's a, it's a $500 million transition and if you'll just pray over it, you pray over it, it happens. They'll come looking for you saying, who are you? Uh, none of you clap. I can't get all of you clap. I'm nobody. God's getting ready to make you a somebody. And did you know that Daniel, Meshach, Zachariah, and Abednego, they turned the whole empire toward God after that tragic thing. Now they let him go, 536 B.C., they let him go. And they come back to Jerusalem and everything is demolished. 
They start working on the temple. The first thing that they do on this day that I'm going to read you is they're building the altar. And 50,000 Jews are discouraged because they see everything desolate, terrible. Their church burnt down. The altar, the Ark of the Covenant is gone. This is when the great mystery of Ge uh, National Geographic and many people, they always want to know where did the Ark go and, and, and nobody really knows where the Ark went and some say it went to Africa and some people think they know where it is. But it definitely was taken from the temple before the Babylonians destroyed it because the Babylonians did not have it. It's either buried somewhere, or who knows? God may have reached down and took it himself. And someday when we go into heaven, he'll show us a movie, and instead of a movie, he'll just show you the real ark that Moses made. It'll be exciting to know how he unveils history. But now it's 536 BC, and they are, they don't know what to do but to build an altar. If you don't know, what to do in life, start praying. And so the Bible says, this is, this is spectacular. It happened on this day. It happened to be just a couple days before atonement. So if they'll put it on the screen, Haggai 2, 1, in the seventh month, in one and 20th day, the 21st day of the seventh month. Now the seventh month is always the first month because seven means completion. So when you see these uh, uh, numbers, it's, it's right at the time of atonement in this particular year came the word of the Lord to the prophet Haggai saying, and the next word, now remember, it was on this day in this month that he said this word today. Yeah. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of uh, uh, Sheatel, the governor of Judah. Now he was the leader. He was the one that was leading the people, 50,000 that was left from, uh, uh, from the Babylonian empire. To Joshua, the son of Zodak, the high priest. So there was a high priest. And to the residue of the people saying, and now the Lord is speaking. He's speaking on the 21st day of the seventh month. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? They're standing in the ashes. They're standing in the house that's been demolished. They're trying to put the altar back. They look around, there's no walls, there's no buildings. The glory of God at one time had set upon the house that Solomon had built so strong that the cloud filled all of Jerusalem and nobody could see each other, the power of God, the glory. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in compassion, comparison of it is nothing? I know you're discouraged. He's saying this. Haggai, Haggai is prophesying to the people in this time. Now remember, remember these minor prophets are also prophesying something they don't see and that is where we are today because we are the latter. The next verse says, and this, this will excite you, yet now be strong, O Zubabal. He says, saith the Lord, be strong. And when you read Joshua, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's Joshua is right after Deuteronomy. Joshua is the one that followed Moses and took the people into the promised land. You cannot get a miracle unless you speak to yourself to be strong. Because Joshua says, God said to Joshua, Joshua, be strong and be very courageous. And you will have great success. I want every person in this room to get ready to be strong. I'm not talking about what you're looking at, what has not happened. I'm not saying look at... I'm not, say, I'm not saying just look at your sickness and look at your poverty or look at your needs. Don't, don't look at that. Zuberbrol, don't look at the ruins. This is the word of the Lord. Because the only way that you can accomplish anything in life, you got to be strong in your faith. Anybody that accomplish, accomplish, uh, accomplishes anything in life, I don't care if they're saved or they're lost. Because they have the gift of faith, because to every man is given a measure of faith. And people have faith, don't even know they have faith, and use the faith and do great things in life because they're strong with their faith to say, I will build this, I will do this, I'm going to do that. 
They don't give any glory to God, but it's the gift that was established to every man as a measure of faith. And they may not know it's God, but it's the faith and the gift that God has given them that you can say, I have a dream. I'm going to do this. I'm coming out of debt. This sickness is not going to get me. I am going to be an overcomer. Can I talk to anybody? Be strong. And the first test you got to overcome before you get a miracle is you got to quit talking about your weakness and how bad it is and how terrible the report is and what he or she did and rise up and say, I will be strong. I will be strong and I will believe that God is about to do something great in my life. So everybody shout, I am strong. Say it out loud. God is getting ready to bless me like I've never been blessed. Now I'm going to make, excuse me, I'm going to go on a, excuse me, since the devil left, I can do this. You're sitting there and you're mouthing the words. Be strong. God's going to do great things. What you're really saying is, I don't believe it. I never will believe it. And I can't wait to get in the car to start a good negative conversation with my wife and my kids. I got problems you have no idea, preacher. So do I. Hell has been in my house and hell has been in my car. Hell has been in my mind. Hell. The only way, you listen to me. The reason why people are broke, busted, and poor is because you talk poor, you talk busted. And you buy copycats of what rich people have. You want to look like them. You want to act like them. But your buckle is a fake, Gigi. But a real person who makes real money is not ashamed to pay for the real Gigi. And if you would be strong and quit kneeling mouthed, you could have a real Gigi. You got to do more than act or wear. You got to speak. Shout it out, everybody. I'm strong. Say it again. I'm strong. I'm reminded when Dr. King was given a speech in Washington, he was stuttering. If you take the first part of his speech, you would be bored with Dr. Martin Luther King who should have been ready at his best for this was the pinnacle of success. Black people had come from all over the the nation. It was the biggest demonstration led under Dr. Martin Luther King who had went to prison, who who had... fought for freedom and civil rights. And he should have, and he did. I admire that. But while he was giving the biggest speech to the largest crowd in the world was watching, he was stuttering, he he was stumbling in his speech. And of course, you wouldn't notice because he's an orator. Oh, what an orator. I have most of his speeches. I, I, I get so inspired with his speeches. And... Who was the singer? I forget the name of the singer. <laughs> Mahalia Jackson was sitting behind him. And she, uh, uh, Martin would call her, excuse me, Dr. Martin Luther King would call her in, at midnight at times and say, sing to me, Mahalia. They're taking me to prison. The dogs have bitten my legs and it gone through that time and time. And Mahalia knew the heart of Dr. Martin Luther King. 
And really he was trying to make the whole world feel sorry in the first part of his speech, which he was doing a good job. But getting people to feel sorry or getting the devil to feel sorry for you or even trying to put God in a manipulation game to feel sorry for you is not going to get the job done. She began to sit behind him and said she knew he's, he's having problems. She said, tell him about the dream. He's up there, there's, you know, you, you've seen the crowds in Washington. You know, some say millions, some say thousands. You've seen it. And he's, he's an orator. I mean, he's trying to get rhythm. And he's probably days wrote this speech out. And when you understand in speech, he, he compared it to people. Should I say this? Should I say that? I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 I want this to be a great, of, 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 a great day of reckoning. And he's actually, stri- he's, he, he's not stuttering, but it just, it's not going over, and the hell you knows it. Yeah. And she starts on the second row, tell him about the dream. Can you imagine? He's up there, and the hell is back there. Tell him about the dream, Martin. What is she saying? Martin, be strong. You're up there giving a bunch of excuses. Yes, we've been through hell and they've sold us and abused us and we, we built this and we're slaves and we were treated no good, but quit using your faith on the past. Use it on the future. And all of a sudden, he just stopped and he, and he quit looking at his notes and said, I have a dream. What was he doing? I'm strong. Oh, Zerubbabel, be strong. Everybody get ready, be strong. I said be strong in the Lord. Let's read this verse. Let's read it. Be strong, all ye people. Of the land, saith the Lord, and the work. For I am with you. I just need five people to stand up and say, thank you, Lord, for being with you. Just five. That's too many, too many. No, no, yeah, just five, just five. I just wanted five. That's too many. Thank you. You may be seated. Just Shout, the Lord is with me. This is the 21st day of the seventh month. And you and I have lived to read and to come to this day. And what he did then, he'll do now. Because God has the ability that the word he gave then, he gives now. I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt. I know they burnt your temple down. I know you've been through hell. I know the doctors told you such and such about your body. I know that you you got this sickness and you got that sickness and you got this problem and you got that problem. But don't you remember I told you I would never leave you and then I'd never forsake you. I didn't tell you there wouldn't be storms. I didn't tell you you wouldn't go through something. But I told you I'd meet you on the other side. So everybody shout, my spirit spirit remaineth remaineth among us. us. Oh boy, we better work on these last three words. Somebody get fired up on the last three words. This is God talking. This is not Zerubbabel. This is not Haggai. This is God talking. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Fear ye not, fear ye not. Give them a hand clap. I'm not not going to fear them anymore. All right? This is the seventh month and the 21st day. How in the world? You can't make this up. We're at church on the seventh month in the 21st day, and this is what God is saying. Next verse. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, 
once in just a little while. I'm about to do something in your life. I'm going to shake the heavens. I'm going to shake the earth. I'm going to shake the sea and the dry land. Next verse. For I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. Nations means people. <laughs> Nation means money. I'm going to get people you're going to meet and there's going to be a transfer of wealth of people from people you don't even know. Get ready now. He said this in the seventh month on the 21st day. And I will fill this house with glory. You may not think this house has got glory, but baby, you better hang on. Ten days from tonight or two weeks from tonight, glory is going to fill the house. Said the Lord of hosts. Next verse. Next verse, if you don't mind, we'll go on. The next verse. I can read it for you. Oh no, oh my God, that's the next verse. Oh my. Oh my, and I, 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 I thought Wells Fargo had that. I, I thought Chase Bank had that. I, I thought Stock Market had that. But God stands up and says, I want to let you know all silver is mine and gold is mine. Saith the Lord of hosts, there's a transform of double portion getting ready to come on your life. <laughs> the the throat doctor who I went to today, which is one of the best in the Midwest, thank you Rick Newell for introducing to me, told me, can you get somebody to take your place tonight? I said that nobody can take my place tonight. Because I'm smart enough to know what I'm about to say. Somebody is going to get the glory of God in their life. There's a transfer of wealth coming in your life. This is God talking about money. Read the next verse. And the glory of the latter house, the latter rain, in the first month shall be greater than anything you have ever done in your life. And regardless of what you saw in the past, and I want to tell everybody, this is not just going to happen to you to sit there like a dead rock. It's only going to happen to those that will get up in their spirit and say, I am strong and I believe. And when he talks about the greater than the former, he is dealing with the day of atonement is upon us. Haggai 2, 7, 21st. It will happen October 5th, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place, now this is very powerful. I'm going to give you peace. You can't have peace when you're in debt. You can't have peace when you're struggling with your bills. But I'm going to lay my head down in a couple of months. There's going to be, I don't know how God's going to do it, but something of double portion is coming. Sunday is on its way. Sunday is on its way. 
The time is now! You read the rest of that chapter. I won't read it. You read the rest of that chapter. He'll give you another day, two months from now, what he's about to do. And let me just tell you something. If you're sitting there trying to wrestle in your own mind, oh, I don't know, I don't know. That's what the devil wants you to. Oh, I don't know. No, that. You need to gird up the loins of your mind. You need to renew your mind in the word of God. Somebody shout, I am strong. <laughs> Tell two or three people, man, I'm strong. I'm feeling it. I'm strong. I'm strong. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Everybody sit down for a minute. I'm trying my best. Some of you have never, ever, during the preaching, one time in years you've been here, you have never one time got up and said, amen, and sat right back down. They said, well, I'm not used to that. Well, I don't want you to do that all the time, but I want to tell you something. There is coming a transfer. It doesn't happen to everybody. He's telling the people, his people, you have been broken. You have had loss, tragedy, setbacks. They're in a city full of ashes. You hear me when I tell you, there are people coming you don't even know. You think you know, but you don't really know. Because God is going to call nations, when, when he says nation, people. They're coming. They're coming with help. They're coming with faith. You don't have to live sick. You're going to live well. Okay, ready? Ready, everybody ready? This is very biblical. I'm not giving you a motivational sermon here. This is very biblical. Be strong. Let the poorest person, let the people in debt, let the people that need... Now, why does God say, I own all the gold and silver? Why do you, why do, you do that in the latter? And, and what, what's this got to do with atonement? Because God owns. Owns. You want to know something? He owns your wealth. And he owns the wealth that's coming to you. He doesn't own the debt. You did that. But he owns the rich. So he declares, let the poor. What do you want the poor to do? I want them to open up their mouth while they're poor. Busted, disgusted, doesn't have any money. I'm, this is God talking. Say, let the poor say before I do a transfer, before I bless you. I got a prophetic call today. I think it was prophetic. I get spam calls on my phone. And I usually won't answer if I don't know the number. Anybody got phones like that? Where they get my number? And I don't answer it. 
If I don't know the number, I don't answer it. They know me, they'll text me and they'll tell me. But I happened to just say, I wonder who this is. Beep. And when I said, hello, is this Steve Muncy? Yes, it is. We want to give you a cash offer. Yeah. Cash offer. Yeah, we, we want to buy the property and give you a cash offer right now. You must be needing a cash offer or something. <laughs> I said, for what property? And she goes off with an address in Texas. I said, ma'am, I don't have any property in Texas. But if you find property in my name, you call me back. Because I may not know there may be something somewhere. That happened to me today. You must be strong enough to say these words. I'm rich. People will laugh at you and say, you're not rich. I'm rich. Let the weak say, I I'm rich. I'm rich. Rich attracts rich. Yes. Strong attracts strong. Yes. Negative people attract negative people. Yes. Strong people attract strong people. Yes. And the timing of this ladder will happen begin Sunday. And what I'm going to tell all of you to do uh, and the groundbreaking is probably going to be spectacular. Yes, it is. It's going to be unbelievable. Yes. We got buses here, and many of you haven't signed up, but you, go on, get on the bus because it's a parade. And, yes. and we, 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 in fact, we need, at the conclusion of the service, we, we need at least 10 men to help us park cars that don't know that are coming because we don't have that much parking. We have to use school, so we have to have. Uh, to help the police in Linwood and all of our XPs because of who's coming. And governor and, and, and uh, president of Cook County and congressman and then us and all of us. And, and you're the most important people because this is just going to be spectacular. I'm telling you what we're getting ready to do. Have you noticed? I haven't asked you for an offering, pay for that 80,000 square foot. The arena is as big as this church auditorium. I haven't taken one offering. Why is that, Pastor? Because it was a little girl who saw our production, saw real horses, wanted to rub the horse, Never had tapped or touched a horse. Then went to our animal ministry and God bless those people who keep our animals. We have 14 stalls. We spend <laughs> refuge. The tickets that we do for the production is what pays for the animals. We have to have the animals. You, can't, you just can't go out and get animals and put them in here. They'll jump on people and go crazy and they go crazy enough as it is. We just have to, and you have to train those animals. And we have, these, are our, these are the church's animals. These are our animals. Ten white horses and donkeys and sheep so that we can do all these productions to make, to let Hollywood know we're not just some little scum of the earth that can give a, a presentation. We're the best of Broadway. We're not just some little church play. We compete with anybody. I'm not talking about the church, I'm talking about the world. So Rashawn and others in the animal ministry have allowed ch your children in Southland and children that never even thought they would ever pet a horse, much less get on a horse. So our horses, they ride. We train. 
They touch. In fact, those poor people at the barn, we have almost taken over and they've told us, please keep the church away because we, we, we cloud their business. And we're going to go away. But it's going to be 10 times the most incredible ride in the arena and 70 so It's going to be great. And we're going to inherit wealth from other people because instead of us paying $200,000 a year for a horse feed and veterinarian bills and keeping the horses, you know, they had to have a shot just like you, B12. We'll keep the money and then rent out 50 other stalls and inherit that wealth and writing lessons. And you notice, I haven't asked you for one dollar. Why is that? Let the poor say, let the weak say, this little girl went home to her daddy, said, Daddy, I want a horse. (laughs) Baby, where in the world are we going to put a horse? At the barn. $400 a month after you buy the horse. Are you that moved by that animal? Yes, Daddy. Daddy buys the horse. Mama buys the horse. She starts riding lessons. She's so excited. She starts competing. In a conversation, because this family has been coming to this church and giving their ties and started their business in a garage. In a garage. And when I went over and prayed for it, I prophesied. I prophesied. They're going to come after you for a billion dollars. They're going to come after you for millions. This family said, we heard about you. want to build an equestrian center. I said, yeah, how much it costs? He said, well, it's, it's, it's going to be. <laughs> and I felt in that spirit coming up in me, let the poor say I'm rich. And that family who gives tithe and wrote a check out and said, we'll pay for it, now put it up. Oh, don't be jealous. They're your brothers and sisters. Man, you ought to be excited about that. Because it's yours. It's mine. There it is. Look over there, we, we knocked down the house. We've already spent twenty dollars or $30,000, knocked the house down, got all the trees down. We'll get ready for all of you to come out there on Sunday. Yeah. Look at that huge field. Yeah. Wait till you see when that building comes out of that 22 acres and the mayor's excited and the trustees are excited and, and, the, and the president of Cook County is excited. And wait till you see behind there that, that, that huge field and, 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 and Burnham and Glenwood and and when that thing starts coming out of the ground, it's not going to look like a barn. It's going to look something like you've never seen. And we, we, we plaster our university and our ministry and what God's going to do. Everybody ought to shout, God is good. Come on, singers. That's transfer of wealth. Let me tell you, that's going to happen to all of you in some way. You haven't sold something. Get ready. In just a little while, God says, I'm going to show up with my glory. You're going to meet a person. Ricky, listen to the word of the Lord. You're going to meet somebody. Rod Grove, bump into somebody. Poet with somebody. Teresa is going to sing at the right time at the right place. And 
Say, you're the next Whitney Houston. And Teresa said, I'm too old to be Whitney. And God says, if Sarah can have a baby at 90, baby, you can have a new album at 90. Why not? Make fun of me, but I'm going to say I'm strong. And Sunday begins the, begins Rosh Hashanah for us to prepare and fast and pray. We're going to have a Bible reading 24 hours. It's going to be in the dome. Take an hour. Get signed up. Go to the computer. Feel good about reading the Bible for an hour. You'll be by yourself. Nobody will be there. And maybe the next person coming in to say, I'll take over after your hour. We're going to read the whole Bible through, through these 10 days of praying and fasting. We're opening the church for security. The prayer will be here 24 hours a day anytime you want to come. I personally... I've never done this. Uh, in fact, I, I get my sleeping bag, packing my bags on Sunday night, going to the cross. I'll be there for a few days. Never done that. Sleep and pray, sleep, read the word of God and be right at the cross in these 10 days. The day of atonement will come on Wednesday, two weeks from tonight. If you read the Bible, the Bible says, you know, wear white, it's a type of uh, purity. So I'm asking you to put on a white shirt or something white. I felt led in the spirit on this atonement that something was going to happen to this region. So I think the Lord spoke to me and I've never done this either. You may be seated for a minute so you won't get tired when I ask you to give. Thank you, I'm just kidding. I've invited two powerful gatekeepers who are retiring from ministry, or not from ministry, but from their position. And just for a few minutes, just in the main service, we're going to unveil the Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to honor Pastor James Meeks, Salem Baptist Church. And his wife will be on the platform and we're going to give them. We're making a special plaque. He's given 40 years of his life. There's a new pastor coming. I think, I think the new pastor will be here too. There's another man I'm going to honor. His name is Apostle Wilson of Valley Kingdom. And I'm going to honor them on the Day of Atonement because he is released after 38 years to a new pastor. These men... I have labored with. These are good men. They're good men. They've come to the end of their journey of pastoring. James Meeks has built that house of glory. People have no idea the 240 some thousand dollar mortgage payment every month on that building. The pressure and the pain. I've been with them. I've seen them fight the battle. He's been my friend. He's been Pastor Kent's friend. We're going to honor them that night. And I told both of them, please do not announce it in your church. We have no more room. And that's the truth. We won't have no room with our own people. I said, please. Pastor Meek said, let me bring my choir. I said, no, we don't have enough room. I, I love your choir. Thank you, Christ. I went in the room. And they went on and somebody announced it in both churches. They love that, their pastor, and they think it's unbelievable that another pastor across town would give honor and a congregation would give honor to another pastor. I mean, think it's great to give honor to whom honors do. I will bring the word of the Lord. We're going to be on Word Live Network. And then baptism, so the service is not going to be long. But it's going to be full, and they're all preparing worship, the worship, in fact, the worship tonight. I don't know what that song was you sung, but that's a, that, that's a good song. That's a good song. You can sing that in just a moment. That's, that's a good song. That's one of the highest anointed songs. You hear her sing tonight. That was a highly anointed song. And 
we will unveil the Ark of the Covenant. All of our dancers and our young people will be on stage and they're learning and creating so that we please God on the Day of Atonement. It will be upon that night, no doubt, that God will look upon his people. I plead with you, whatever you do in the next few days, be kind, be nice. Tell God whatever I need to do. Promise God a good offering on October 9th. We're going to lay it on the Ark of the Covenant. I'll bring the Ark of the Covenant. You'll get to touch it. It's symbolic of the real Ark of the Covenant in heaven. And so you will come and you will give a special offering. That's recorded in scriptures. Whatever God speaks to you about. It's going to be it's going to be incredible. I know that something I don't quite know exactly. And next Wednesday night, I will already in advance prepare all of you. I probably won't shave for two or three days. I don't know how I'll look. I'm going to come out from the cross. I'll do next Wednesday night. I don't know what zone I'll be in, but I'll be here next Wednesday night. I don't know what God is going to say or do. It's going to be wonderful but I really believe in the year of Queen Elizabeth dying that God has marked this year for greatness among all of you and transfer of wealth and blessings and healing I got a phone call the other day and Benny Hinn said I want to come on a Wednesday night. I said, now, Pastor Benny, I want you to come, but you can't have four-hour services. He said, Brother Steve, whatever you want me to do, my brother, I will do, my brother. So from 6 to 8, 